Hey folks, Steve here, talking uh, Wendy and Lucy, um, well formerly Train Choir, uh, which was, uh, Train Choir was written by John Raymond. If you haven't read any John Raymond, I highly recommend you do. He writes, uh, well he writes screenplays, he writes novels, and he writes short stories, and he writes them all very well. And he's a, he's a really good writer, um, as you will um, gather by his short story here, which is just terrific, which I'll talk more about in a second. And, of course, the film is directed by Kelly Reichardt and starring uh, Michelle Williams. Uh, Michelle Williams is playing Wendy in The Wendy and Lucy, and Lucy is played by the director, Kelly Reichardt's dog, uh, Lucy, who I believe didn't change um, her name for the film. That's my understanding. Okay, so, um, you know, sort of talking through Thomas Leach's modes, um, the film, like just through its construction and the way it, it was constructed, is celebration, because it has to be celebration, because it's actually, it's celebrating um, the, the, you know, the short story, because the person who wrote the short story, John Raymond, actually wrote the screenplay with Kelly Reichardt and worked on it. And more than that, um, it's not that John Raymond wrote this short story and Kelly Reichardt thought, oh, that's, you know, that would make a really great film. I'll, I'll work with John Raymond on that, um, on sort of developing it into a feature film. John Raymond and Kelly Reichardt actually kind of came up with the idea of, of the story together. You know, they sort of plotted it out. John Raymond had this sort of rough idea. He spoke to her about it, um, and they sort of nutted out the plot. And then John Raymond went off, and he wrote, he wrote it as a short story. And then they um, fleshed that out, the short story, into uh, a feature film. Now, what I've sort of said, so Kelly Ruckert kind of says, well, basically what we were doing was we were adapting the short story. But I would argue that it's more collaboration than um, uh, than adaptation. And what I mean by that is, are they really adapting the short story as much as collaborating on something together? And it's come out in different ways. Like, so they collaborated on it, it comes out as a short story, and then it comes out as a feature film. I think there is something um, different about, about that. And something else to note about um, uh, Reichardt and John Raymond's uh, relationship is that they've worked very closely on a number of projects together. And the other person um, in the mix here is Todd Haynes, who's an absolutely terrific director. He directed um, uh, Carol and uh, I'm Not Here, the, the, the crazy um, Bob Dylan biopic. And he's made he's made some terrific films, and um, he produced he produced Wendy and Lucy, and John Raymond often writes for either Kelly Rokart or uh, Todd Haynes. So um, you can see here that he uh, he actually wrote a number of these um, the episodes for Todd Haynes's um, adaptation of Mildred Pierce, which is really really terrific, and also all of his other writing credits are all Kelly Rokart's films. So he wrote Old Joy. Um, and then he wrote Wendy and Lucy. He went on and wrote Mick's Cutoff, um, which is a Western um, from the perspective of these these women sort of um, lost in wilderness, which is fantastic. Michelle Williams stars as, as well. Um, and, and also uh, Night Moves, which is another terrific Kelly Reichardt film. I keep saying terrific because I think Kelly Reichardt is really um, one of the great visionary directors, and she's um, she's really doing really interesting things. Um with with not just with cinema but actually with adaptation because all of her work is adapting um something from some form and she's really one um to you know give great attention to as far as um sort of you know contemporary adaptation studies goes but um the argument i'm sort of making is that of course it's going to be celebration mode because it, it's it's these two people working together to try and really um you know uh really try and flesh out the heart of, and the energy of what's going on in that short story that John Raymond went off and wrote. Now, um, the interesting thing 
um, is I'll just play you this. This is this is the opening. Um, this is the opening sh- shot. Well, it's not the opening shot. The opening shot of the film is uh, a train. But look at the camera and how the camera is sort of tracking along. And you've got Wendy and Lucy in the wilderness playing together. And I think this is a really interesting way that sets up a number of really important things for the film. Like, firstly, it sets up the fact that Wendy and Lucy have a very close relationship, right? And anyone who's a dog lover... Um, well, I understand that if you have a dog, you have a particular relationship with that dog and it's an important relationship and um, the idea of being separated from, from that dog, uh, you, know, you, know, it, it, you know, just creates anxiety, just the idea of it. Anyway, if you actually look at the camera, which is what I'm trying to get to here, look at how the camera is at a distance to um, Michelle Williams, right? And... And what's really interesting is the camera stays at the distance, but Michelle Williams is actually walking towards the camera. So she's changing the perspective without the camera actually changing. And that's really important, um, which I'll talk about in a sec, in what the camera is actually doing and what the film is really interested in doing in that the characters are motivating the action. And that's the same for the short story where the short story is it's really about here are these characters and let's just spend some time with these characters kind of working themselves out trying to work each other out and as you saw in that opening shot the camera is observing right so it's very observational as is the book Um, the camera's at a distance Um, and also what's really important I think is you've got the characters placement um, you got the character's placement within the environment. Now, in that opening shot, you've got the environment which is kind of the wilderness and it looks beautiful. It's kind of the woods, right? But what happens is once you sort of leave the woods, you see where we are. We're in this sort of industrial, kind of rundown, crummy kind of American town. But the camera is, has set up a particular way of observing the, the characters, right? And the, the camera actually stays doing that across the film. But the only the only thing that changes is the environment changes, right? So here you still got Michelle Williams um, kind of in the environment being observed by the camera. And it, it's really it's it's a really interesting approach to the film because although um, you know Michelle Williams is a Wendy, she's she's kind of stuck in this crummy town. Her car's broken down. Um, she can't find her dog. Um, you know, it's all, everything shit for her, right? And the camera, you know, you could actually get a lot of sentimentality out of this and you could actually really force um, a, a, the an audience response to this, right? And the whole idea is you could you could overplay the the sentimentality of what's going on here but by keeping the camera at a distance i don't think it falls into that trap at all and it actually asks the audience to work harder to actually really understand what's going on here and really observe what's going on here and see how lost this character is amongst this environment because that's the thing the character is always one um, amongst this environment and they're not really ever singled out. And the story is also really interested in doing that. It's observing this character within an environment. Um, so uh, we're still sort of talking about celebration mode here. I just want to play you a clip. And this will sort of talk more to the whole idea of what I was banging on about when I said that the the character is observing and it's the characters who are really kind of... Um, pushing um, particular motivations and things like that. So here is, um, I'll just play the clip as I'm talking to it and just concentrate on the camera, which I think is really, it's really quite interesting um, what's going on, where the camera is and when the shots cut and how they cut. So this is Wendy when she's on the phone um, looking for her dog. She's calling up uh, the pound. And the basically the camera cuts right when the characters 
force the camera to cut. So what this film is is a motivated is motivated camera movement, right? So that the camera moves when the characters move, right? And you see that Michelle Williams in that previous shot, she sat down and she was basically going out of the shot. So then we go to this two shot mid shot. Um, so we can see both of them. Now we get these cutaways when the characters are talk, start talking about the where they are, the environment, and things like this. And you get exactly the same thing going on in the short story. Um, so I'll just read you just just a bit. Um, so they they're kind of talking through. I mean, the thing about um, the short story, which I really like, and I think you kind of get it um, with these two. Um, with these two actors is just the real kind of connection and rapport that they have. Now, the fact that the, um, the security guard is older, you know, like there's no like sexual, you know, thing between them and there shouldn't be. Um, but the, the problem is a lot of, a lot of films would like kind of play into this and sort of come up with some sort of really stupid kind of love interest or something like that. This film isn't interested in doing this. Doing that, um, that actor is um, Wally Dalton. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, he's sort of done bit parts across his career, including, ladies and gentlemen, um, one episode, according to Internet Movie Database, of Blue Healers. So, um, if you if you saw that episode, let me know. Um, be interested to know what you meant. But the the thing about the short story is there's a lot of sort of um, nice kind of back and forth dialogue between the two and there's a there's a nice rhythm to the dialogue and Kelly Reichardt when she talks about this film and ad adapting this film she's often talking about rhythmically about actually what's going on um so anyway I'll just read you you can't get a job without an address anyway Verna said so Verna in the short is um Wendy um, without a phone, that's why I'm going to Alaska. I hear they need people up there. You can't get an address without an address, Jack said. Can't get a job without a job. It's all fixed. Now, now this is the important bit. Together they watched the pickup pull into the parking space near the trash cans. Verna was having trouble formulating the question she wanted to ask. And then it just goes on. But the thing is, the thing that's really important about that is together they watched the pickup. They're, they're doing things together. They're looking at things together. They're commenting on things together. They're kind of in sync with one another. And I think that's really important. You kind of get it in these scenes. And it's not like this isolation. And the whole point of the film is that Wendy is stuck and she's alone and she just needs somebody to give her a helping hand. And it's it, it's this guy. And... Um, it's you know it's really beautiful kind of their relationship I think. Now if you actually look at the way that the 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 scene is shot and a lot of the scenes are shot, most of the scenes take place outside and most of the scenes take place in the day. It's natural lighting, right? So it doesn't feel like it's a studio movie at all. The um, now the acting is inexpressive by conventional standards, and this is something about Kelly Reichardt's um, direction that she doesn't ask a lot of camera move, uh, actions from her actors, right? She actually wants it to be very subtle. She wants the audience to be doing the work, um, not the not the actors. And and like I said, the the camera movement is very motivated by the by the um but what's going on with the with the actors. When the actors move, the camera will move with them. It's not the camera moving um, and then the uh, and then the actors moving. Okay, now. Um, I think um, something else, you know, you sort of picked it up in that last scene I was talking about, but there's something about um, Lucy looking across the film, that she's there, she's observing, the camera is observing us observing Lucy. But this remains a central aspect of the film. Now, the film was shot um, very cheaply and very quickly. It was actually shot in 20 days. And to shoot a feature film in 20 days is really, really quick. And what you've, um, what, there's this beautiful passage in the book um, where uh, Lucy has kind of, um, there's a, this kind of creepy guy who, um, you know, starts talking to Lucy. And anyway, from the short, Right, it says this. I don't look at me, the man said, and Verna obeyed, shifting her gaze onto a path of dirt near her nose. She looked so hard at an 
at an ant walking by, she thought she could see the moon reflected in its eye. Now, just that whole idea of the moon reflected in that eye is just kind of, kind of incredible. But, I mean, of course the film couldn't do that. You can't, you know, because it didn't have the money and things like that, right? But you've that shot on Lucy in the film is just this extreme close-up of her eyes looking absolutely petrified. And even though it's dark and you can't see anything, you can actually see her eyes as you can in this shot. And it's really, really fantastic the way that the, the film is trying to visualize um those really nice kind of images that is actually being created by john raymond and it's you know to, to dismiss the short as well he just kind of wrote it to get some interest so they could get the money for the film i think is dismissing what's really really fantastic about the the short um the short story because it's, it's beautifully beautifully written okay uh now another mode from leech is the illusion um, sort of illusion on um, sort of two levels. One, it's a road movie, right? But it's not a road movie in that you're kind of on the road because, well, you're on the road, but then the car breaks down and then you're stuck. And this is the whole thing. And then um, Lucy and uh, Wendy kind of split. And then so um, everything kind of goes to shit. But the thing is, because she's stuck in this small town, right and she's only got a couple of hundred bucks on her and she's in a foreign town you know foreign being not her own town and she's not close to anything or anyone right she she's very isolated she has no network she has no so no safety net she has nobody she can knock on their door and ask for money and i think that what's what makes this this film so so tragic in that you know, all she needs is someone to help her out and there's nobody there and there's nobody willing to do it until, of course, the security guard comes along and he's actually, you know, shows her some kindness. And once he shows her some kindness, things do start to um, get better for um, uh, dear old Wendy, played by um, Michelle Wheat, who's terrific. Uh, now, it's also, as a Kelly Reichardt film, is... You know, it, 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 it's again, it's kind of playing, well, it's playing around certainly with um, Kelly Reichardt's whole idea of characters um, lost, falling, you know, metaphorically falling, and we don't really know where they are. And Meek's Cutoff is a perfect example of that, where you've got this, um, this kind of little community and they get lost in the wilderness. They literally don't know where they are. And she's always playing around with that whole idea. And she's always playing around um, with with her female characters. And she's very, very interested in the perspective of her female characters, often in environments where women are often overlooked and dismissed. And Meek's Cutoff is a really good example of that being a Western. Um, and it, the film is from the perspective of the women. But also in 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 the film, um, as, as well as the... the, the um, the book of the short story is you look at um, Wendy or Vera's relationship with the mechanic and the way that the mechanic talks to her. And he's, he's talking to her like somebody he can, he can basically talk down to, he can ignore, he can make them wait. And, you know, he's, he, I mean, the question is, would he be talking to a man in the way that he talks to um, Wendy? And probably not. Right. Uh, now, Adjustment. Um, this is sort of adjust changes and alters the source without losing the sentiment. I just think um, that what you've got. I mean, here, here again is another long shot of Wendy in the environment, but it becomes more political just because you're looking at it. You're looking at this place, which is so destitute and so dearth of you know just you know finances. You're seeing the poverty. You're seeing the emptiness. And without actually like trying to do that, it just does it just through the difference between watching something um, in Sights and Sounds and actually reading about something, I would argue. And great shot here. Just, just an example of how Kelly Reichardt is actually able to get a real beauty from what would otherwise be seen as so drab and barren. Okay, so just some final thoughts uh, when watching and reading the short. Think about the following. Um, 
the Vera or Wendy's backstory, why don't we see it? I mean, this is the thing. We don't actually see any backstory in this film. Um, you know, like, who is this character? Where is she from? What is she doing? And the fact that we don't is really, really interesting. So compare that to other films we've seen where backstory becomes so crucial to what's actually going on. And um, think about that, you know, in lead up to other films as well. And Wendy clearly has a backstory and we, we, we get her, we get who she is. So it's not like the backs, we're actually missing something for the backstory. And I actually think that we get a lot of that backstory just through Michelle Williams' um, performance and her costume. You know, just think about, just, just, just look at this image right here. And, you know, she just looks so sad <laughs> and she looks so um, destitute and she looks so lonely and she looks like someone who still has this great spirit. There's a great spirit about her. You know, she's going to Alaska. She's going to get money. She's going to, you know, her and, her and Lucy can have this great life together. Um, but, you know, it, you know, well, things, you know, go in a particular way for her. But it's really interesting that Michelle Williams is cast in this role. And, I mean, Michelle Williams plays uh, Marilyn Monroe in My Week with Marilyn. And when she's cast as Marilyn Monroe, it was kind of considered as, you know, appropriate casting. You know, she's got this great glamour to, to her all the time. And being cast in this role, firstly, it says a lot about Michelle Williams as, um, as where did I go? Sorry. Um, it says a lot about Michelle Williams as an actor um, in that she's willing to actually play this kind of role. And she actually, you know, she slept in her car, you know, during the filming and things like this. Um, you know, I mean, she's always, she always, she's willing to go a long way with um, the director because they have this relationship, you know, where they've worked on a number of films together. And once you work on a number of films together with someone, you know, there's a, there's a particular trust that's formed and you can really, really um, see that here. Across the film and the short story, what do we learn about this character and how do we learn about it? How does the short give us information about it and how does the film do it? What knowledge does the short story offer our experience watching the film? So by watching the film, do we have a better understanding of this film by reading the short story? And this whole, this question kind of comes up about adaptation and what is it and why is it important? And, you know, how do we watch something as an adaptation and what does adaptation actually offer? What does the source offer us? Um, and just finally, what is the difference between collaboration and adaptation? And is there any difference at all between the two? Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Wendy and Lucy. Um, Michelle Williams in fine form, um, absolutely terrific form, and uh, Kelly Reichardt just proving yet again that she's one of the um, one of the most interesting directors um, working today, and also um, John Raymond, a terrific, terrific writer. And um, if you haven't read his stuff, uh, read his stuff. Uh, Livability is where this short story appeared which is a book of other short stories, and also appears um, the short story um, for Old Joy, which was another um, John Raymond short story that Kelly Reichardt directed. Okay, uh, look forward to seeing you soon, and I hope you enjoy reading Train Choir and watching Wendy and Lucy. Bye for now.